Sutra. What is the Bodhisattva's giving of outer wealth? Disciples of the Buddha. Suppose a Bodhisattva is in his pram, full featured, replete with the multitude of marks and clothed in garments of superb elegance. He has just received the anointing of the crown and been inaugurated as a will turning king. He is replete with the seven jewels and rules over the four continents. Suppose he is approached by a person who addresses his lordship, saying, I am poverty stricken and oppressed by a multitude of sufferings. I only hope that the humane one will especially let fall his kindness, relinquish his royal position and bequeath it to me. Then I can be in command and enjoy the blessings of a king. Commentary What is the Bodhisattva's giving of outer wealth? Forest of merit and virtue, Bodhisattva continues again. What is the great Bodhisattva's giving of outer wealth? Disciples of the Buddha. All of you disciples of the Buddha should now pay attention and listen to what I have to tell you. Suppose a Bodhisattva is in his pram. This Bodhisattva who is cultivating the giving of outer wealth is not like the young Bodhisattva we spoke of before, the adolescent. Now, we have a Bodhisattva who is in the pram of life and full featured. He's a flourishing years in full and well proportioned features. He's extremely good looking. He also has a virtuous practice and is replete with the multitude of marks. He has 31 of the 32 marks and the 80 subtle characteristics. He is clothed in garments of superb elegance. He has the most precious and valuable flowers in, and clothing adorning his body. This Bodhisattva has cultivated the six parameters and the 10,000 conducts to perfection. His merit and virtue can be likened to the wonderful flowers of clothing which adorn him. He has just received the anointing of the crown and been inaugurated as a will turning king. This king is the gold will turning sage king and he is replete with the seven jewels. These seven jewels has, have been explained in the previous section. This world turning king is extremely wealthy and honored and rules over the four continents. Suppose he is approached by a person who addresses his lordship. You, are, you who are listening to the sutra should know that this is an analogy. The sutra text says, suppose this should happen. Maybe it happened and maybe it didn't. It's just an analogy. It's just for the sake of discussion. You shouldn't suppose that there definitely is such a person. Maybe there really is such a person. However, the word suppose includes the, the possibility that there is no such person at all. The point being made is that a Bodhisattva should have this kind of mind of giving a total renunciation. The person practicing the Bodhisattva way has to be this way. We are just expressing the principle here. So suppose a person comes and says to the king, I am poverty stricken and oppressed by a multitude of sufferings. I am impoverished to the point that I don't have any food to eat, any clothes to wear or any place to live. And because I am so poor and destitute, I am pressured, pressured by a host of sufferings. This is suffering within suffering. Since he is enduring this suffering within suffering, he wants to win a sweet stakes, get a lucky ticket, or take first in the lottery. So he decides to go and back from the wheel turning sage king. He says to the king, I only hope that the human one will especially, will especially let for his kindness relinquish his royal position and bequeath it to me. I only hope that you, greatly kind and compassionate will turning sage king, will especially consent, condescend to pity me and concede your throne to me in order to support my life.
then I can be in command and enjoy the blessings of a king. If you give me your kingly position, then I will be a well-turning sage king. I will stand in for you to govern the four great continents. I will enjoy the happiness that you heretofore have enjoyed. O oh, oh, king, all of these kinds of blessings and rewards will be mine. So everyone think it over. If you were to become a will turning sage king and then such a completely nutty person were to come back for your position of will turning sage king, would you able to give it up or not? Return the light and ask yourself whether or not you could do this. Some people say what is spoken of in the sutra is just talk. What will turning sage king would possibly be able to relinquish his position in that circumstance? It's just because you could not relinquish such a position or such a position if you were in it that you have never been able to be in that position. If you were able to relinquish it, then you would be able to become a will turning sage king. It's just because you are so stingy and wouldn't be able to give up the wealthy and honored position of a king that up to now, you haven't attained this kind of position. Sutra, at that time, the Bodhisattva thinks like this. All that is glorious glorious will pass away and when it is gone i will be unable to further benefit living beings it is fitting that i fulfill his wishes having had this thought he gives him everything without any regret this is called the giving of outer wealth commentary at that time what time when the person comes to ask the will turning sage came to bequeath his royal position to him. At this time, the Bodhisattva thinks like this, All that is glorious, the riches and honor that I revel in now will pass away and when it is gone, I will be unable to further benefit living beings. It's for certain this will all fade and come to an end. When that time comes, if I want to practice giving, I won't have any way to benefit living beings. Although now I can benefit living beings using my present riches, however, if I wait until I don't have any riches, then not to speak about benefiting living beings, I won't even be able to benefit myself. Therefore, it is fitting that I should fulfill his wishes. I must accord with what he wants and satisfy the wishes of this living being who has come to seek my regal position. Having had this thought, he gives him everything. After having had this thought, he instantly gives up his position of will turning sage king to that person without any regret. He has no afterthought, no remorse. He gives everything away. But the substance of the three wills is empty. There is no reciprocity of the gift to the giver. There is no one who gives, there is nothing which is given, and in the middle there is no one who receives. The substance of the three wills is empty, so he says he gives without any regrets. This is called the giving of outer wealth. One can make offerings of one's countries, cities, wives, and children, but this is not easy to actually accomplish, so all of you don't believe it. If you believed it, you'd be able to practice the Bodhisattva way. But people who don't believe will have to wait a while, and in the future, they will be able to practice the Bodhisattva way. There are a lot of people here for this Kuan Yin Bodhisattva recitation session. I counted 43 people. In this country, there are that many people who aren't afraid of hardship, and they have all come to recite Kuan Yin Bodhisattva's name. This has never happened before. This is a first. All of you who are participating in this Kuan Yin session, session are number one. You are all first. Those who don't want to be number one couldn't come to participate in this Kuan Yin session. All of you should know to undergo suffering is to end suffering. To enjoy blessings is to exhaust blessings. 
If you endure the suffering within suffering, you will be able to become a Bodhisattva. Bodhisattvas just have to want suffering. As it is said, bitter now, sweet later. If you are able to undergo suffering now, in the future you will become a Buddha. In practicing the Bodhisattva way, you have to first take a little bit of a loss. If you can undergo suffering now, then in the future your bliss will be eternal. If you can just endure one hour's worth of suffering, then in the future you will have eternal happiness. Sutra, what is called the giving of inner and outer wealth, disciples of the Buddha, suppose a Bodhisattva such as described above who has the position of the will turning king, is replete with the seven jewels and rules over the four continents, is approached by someone who says, this position of will turning king that the king inherited long ago is sometime I have never had. I only wish, oh great king, that you would relinquish it to me and that you your majesty would become my servant. Commentary Previously, the sutra explained the giving of inner wealth and the giving of outer wealth. The giving of inner wealth is the giving of head, eyes, brains, and marrow. The giving of outer wealth is the giving of countries, cities, wives, and children. Now, this session of text discusses the giving of inner and outer wealth. What is called the giving of inner and outer wealth? This is a rhetorical question. Is asking about this kind of Dharma, disciples of the Buddha. The Bodhisattva forest of merit and virtue again is afraid that all of these Bodhisattvas have entered Samadhi, so he calls out again, Disciples of the Buddha. Suppose a Bodhisattva such as described above, the Bodhisattva who is youthful in age, robust and strong, whose body is adorned with the marks and characteristics just as the one described previously. Who has the position of a will turning king? He is in the position of a god will turning king and is replaced with the seven jewels. His seven jewels are totally perfect and complete and he rules over the four continents. He lost over the entire universe. Suppose he is approached by someone who wants to test him and who says, this position of will turning king that the king inherited long ago is something I have never had. You've been a king for a long time, but I've never gotten be to be one. I only wish, oh great king, that you would relinquish it to me. But not only do I want that, I also hope that you, your majesty, your majesty would become my servant. If you can renounce a position like this and fulfill this wish, this is truly the conduct of a great Bodhisattva. Sutra At that time, the Bodhisattva thinks to himself, My body, wealth and gems as well as the royal position are all dharmas which are impermanent and destined to decay. I am now in my pram and my riches encompassed all under heaven. Since this beggar has come forth, I will use what is insubstantial to seek a substantial drama. Having thought thus, he gives everything over to that person and with his own body, respectfully and diligently serves him. His mind harbors no regret. This is called the giving of inner and outer wealth. Commentary. This will-turning king has great riches and stature. He has a lot of wealth and power. A person has come before him to beg for his royal position and all his wealth. In addition, he asks that the king become his personal servant. This is an extremely difficult request to grant, but at that time, the Bodhisattva thinks to himself, my body, wealth and gems as well as the royal position, the body which I possess, my inner wealth of head, eyes, brain and marrow, and my outer jewels such as gold, 
silver, lapis lazuli, crystal, mother of pearl, red pearls, and carnelian, as well as the disposition of a real will turning sage king, are all dharmas which are impermanent and destined to decay. They are all impermanent and in the future they will certainly perish. They cannot exist forever. This is the drama of impermanence. I am now in my prime. Now I am young and strong. I have plenty of blood and energy, and my riches encompass all under heaven. My wealth and position include the entire universe. Everything under heaven is mine, since this beggar has come forth and is one who seeks my wealth and position of a king. I will use that what is insubstantial to seek a substantial dharma. I will offer up. His body, which is insubstantial, and my throne and riches, which are ephem ephemeral, and give them to this person. So, in order to seek for the firm, strong dharma, the dharma of irreversibility from Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Having thought thus, after thinking this over, he gives everything over to that person. He immediately gives away the position of a king, his body, and all of his wealth. He gives it all away and doesn't keep even a little bit, to the point that with his own body, respectfully and diligently serves him. He is respectful and vigorous when he acts as a servant. He is sincere and giving up his royal position. And after making this gift, his mind harbors no regret. This is called the giving of inner and outer wealth. Sutra. What is meant by a Bodhisattva's total giving? Disciples of the Buddha, as before, this Bodhisattva inherits the position of a will-turning king. is replete with the seven jewels and rules over the four continents. But one time, limitless poverty-stricken people approached him and said. Great King, your renown pervades and is heard throughout the ten directions. Out of veneration, you have come. We, out of veneration, we have come. We each have certain things we would like, and we hope that you will be compassionate and fulfill our wishes. Then the poor people begged variously of the king. Some asked. For his country, some wanted his wives or children. Some wish, wished for his hands and feet. Some wanted his blood, flesh, heart, lungs, head, eyes, marrow, and brains. The Bodhisattva at that time had this thought: I will eventually have to part from all those for whom I have fondness and love, but it will have been of no benefit to living beings. Now, with the hope of forever casting out greed and emotional love, I will use all of these things that are destined to disperse to fulfill this living being's wishes. Having had this thought, he bestowed upon them all the things they wanted, without any thoughts of regret, nor any sense of repulsion or contempt toward those living beings. This is called total giving. Commentary after the Bodhisattva forest of merit and virtue had spoken about the giving of inner and outer wealth, he goes on to speak about the giving of everything, total giving. What is meant by a Bodhisattva's total giving? Disciples of the Buddha, I will now tell all of you as before. This Bodhisattva, this Bodhisattva is in the same position as the one spoken of above. Who gave inner wealth, outer wealth, and inner and outer wealth? He inherits the position of a well-turning king. Is replete with the seven jewels and rules over the four continents. At one time, the meatless, poverty-stricken people is not known how many destitute people approached him and said, "Great king." Your renown pervades and is heard throughout the ten directions. You are a great philanthropist. 
Out of veneration, we have come. We admire your loftiness, your acts of giving, and your excellent conduct. And so, we have come to this country to see you. Now, we each have certain things that we would like. Each one of us has that which we wish to seek from you. We and we hope that you will be compassionate and fulfill our wishes. Then the poor people begged variously of the king. Some asked for his country. Some wanted his wives or children. Not only did they seek things external to his body, but they also sought for things within his body. Some wished for his hands and feet. Some wanted his blood, flesh, heart, lungs, head, eyes, marrow, and brains. The Bodhisattva at that time had this thought: I will eventually have to part from all those for whom I have fondness and love. I will eventually have to leave all of those whom I am fond of, my wives, children, and the people of my country. I will depart from them, but at that time I will have been no benefit to living beings. Now, with the hope. A forever casting out greed and emotional love, I will use all of these things that are destined to disperse to fulfill this living being's wishes. Now I wish to renounce all these things I am fond of. I will certainly have to separate from all of these objects of wealth in the future, no matter how much wealth I have. When I die, I have to. Go empty-handed. I can't take it along with me. Therefore, I shall satisfy the wishes of living beings instead. Having had this thought, he bestowed upon them all the things they wanted. He gave away his countries, wives, children, and cities. His head, eyes, brains, and marrow. He gave it him. He gave them all away to. This destitute people, without any thoughts of regret in his mind, he didn't have any regrets, nor any sense of repulsion or contempt toward those living beings. He did not detest living beings. He did not look down on them as being people who are greedy. This is called total giving. This is the Dharma door of total giving that the Bodhisattva practices.